Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Nigel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I film outdoors in bright, sunny conditions. But more specifically, we're gonna be talking about how I use variable ND filters to help get proper exposure and motion blur in my videos. Before we jump into that, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Typhoto. Now I've used Typhoto filters for a long time and more specifically their variable ND filters I have on my lens 90% of the time when I'm outside filming because these actually pack a lot of quality and performance for really not that much money. And another really cool thing about Thai Photo is that they actually provide a lifetime damage replacement warranty, which is rad. So let's head outside and I'll show you how I use the Thai Photo Variable ND to get proper exposure and motion blur in my videos. Okay, so first let's establish what correct motion blur is. Right now I'm filming at f1.7, which is a really wide aperture and it's letting in a lot of light but I have the shutter speed at like 3,000th of a second. So the motion blur or lack thereof is gonna to be totally wrong. There is no motion blur currently and it doesn't look natural. Now that's the only way that I can really expose my image without using a variable ND filter is upping the shutter speed up or I'll have to close the aperture down. But if I wanted to keep my aperture nice and wide, the shutter speed is really the only thing that I can change. So this is what improper or lack of motion blur looks like. So now let's use this variable ND and we can keep the aperture at f1.7, but we can put the shutter speed where it's supposed to be. Now we're shooting at 24 frames per second, so the shutter speed needs to be at around 48, but most cameras can't get to exactly 48, so the closest you can get is 50. All right, so now we're shooting at 1 50th of a second and we have the variable ND filter on. And as you can see right here, we have normal motion blur, similar to what your eyes would see. So this is what correct motion blur is supposed to look like shooting at 24p at 1 50th of a second in bright sunlight accomplished using a variable ND filter. So this is a shot that you would definitely see a lot more vloggers do. It's a little closer to the camera, but obviously I am way overexposed. So let's stop down the aperture to right about there. So yeah, what I would have to do to get this type of a shot without a variable ND filter is stop the aperture down. But what if I wanted to get some nice shallow depth of field and you know background separation? Shooting at f5.6 on a micro four thirds camera doesn't give you a lot of background separation, even if you're this close to your lens. So let's put this variable ND filter on and crank it back up to f1.7 and see the nice shallow depth of field that we can achieve. All right, so this is a lot better. You have some nice creamy background blur and some good separation between you and the background. And this is a much more pleasing image in my opinion. And again, you would only be able to get this kind of a shot if you had a ND in front of your lens because of how bright it is outside. Obviously you could achieve it by upping your shutter speed, but again, the proper shutter speed is two times your frame rate. So if you're shooting at you know, 24 frames per second, that's 48. If you're shooting at 30, that's 60. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, that's 120 and so on. So one thing I really do like about the Thai photo filters, they have hard stops on their filters. Whereas with a lot of other filters, you can just keep on spinning them. And what happens then is it creates that really gross X pattern in your video. But with Thai photo filters, you're never gonna accidentally go too far and create that really horrible X pattern because there are hard stops at minimum and at maximum ND. Okay, so obviously it's definitely important to have a variable ND filter when you're filming outside, no matter what you're filming, unless you wanna stop your aperture down or use an insanely high shutter speed, you really need a variable ND filter. And for me, when I film action sports, I haven't really needed a variable ND filter for some of the shots that I've gotten, especially the more fisheye angles, but ever since I got this little lens, which this is a 7.5 millimeter F2, this isn't actually a fisheye lens, so it doesn't distort the edges like a fisheye lens would. And so you can actually put filters onto this little lens. And as you can see, I have a 77 millimeter to 46 millimeter step down ring on this little guy, which allows me to put my 77 millimeter Thai photo variable ND filter on it. So this setup has actually been allowing me to shoot at like, you know, an F4 instead of like a F six or a F11, which at that point, when you're shooting really closed down, it can make your video look like you've been shooting it on a camcorder. So having a setup like this can actually add something to my skate videos, which I think is kind of cool. So yeah, that's how you film motion outdoors in bright sunlight using variable ND filters. And again, my personal favorites are the Thai photo variable NDs. Thank you so much to Thai Photo for sponsoring this video and I'll have a link to their website where you can check out these filters. They also have polarizers and stuff like that. So definitely go check them out. I definitely recommend them. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye.